Greetings everybody, Mike with Spray Jones and today we're going to go over the four pitfalls that are common to people when they're getting spray foam. So you, the homeowner, the building owner, any Joe Blow, John Q public can watch this video and quickly get educated on what to look out for and bring up your IQ in the spray foam world. So the first pitfall is wrong type of spray foam. There's two main classes of foam, closed cell and open cell foam. In the closed cell foam world, usually the foam is going to weigh two pounds per cubic foot. If you're getting a roof done, it could be three pounds or four pounds per cubic foot. But two pound per cubic foot foam is the most common and we'll just call it two pound foam. Two pound closed cell foam can be used against concrete. It can be used in wet situations, in dry situations, it can be put to subgrade so it can be inside of a basement outside of a basement it needs no extra vapor barrier it has excellent adhesion it's very difficult to get it off of what has been sprayed to when it's been sprayed correctly it will strengthen the wall or the metal or the roof or whatever it's being adhered to it will provide waterproofing so if it's on an exterior of a building or on a roof or on outside of a foundation or the outside of a tank it's going to provide some waterproofing properties and it can stand up to the weather, it can stand up to abuse. So you want to make sure that if you're, you're in a situation that needs two pound foam, that you're getting it and that you're not getting open cell foam. Now open cell foam is typically half a pound per cubic foot. You can rip this stuff out with your bare hands. It's light, it's fluffy, it has excellent sound uh, properties. It is not a vapor barrier on its own. It is usually overfilled into the cavity and then shaved flush but it cannot go where it's going to be getting wet. So it's not going to be going into subgrade situations. It's not going to be into a crawl space or on a dirt floor. It's not going to be sprayed externally on a building and it's not structural. It will add a little bit of extra structural component over fiberglass or mineral fiber, but it's not having the same structural properties as the two pound closed cell foam. It is excellent for tight areas, blind spots, or areas that are hard to detail out. So you want to make sure that if you're in a situation where you have to have two pound that you have it or if you're using half pound foam that you're using that product and you just need to ask questions and be able to know and recognize what the products are. Second issue that we run into is adhesion. If the foam is being sprayed to anything that is wet or frosty or dirty it's not going to stick. So it has got to be clean. It has got to be dry and if the foam does get sprayed to something and it's not sticking properly it's going to pop right off sometimes partially and sometimes fully so you can tell this very quickly by pushing on it if it's closed cell foam you can hit it with your fingers and your hand and if it's disbonded it's going to have a hollow sound to it because there's going to be a gap between this, the foam and the substrate uh, a lot of times it will hump in the middle, it will rise, it'll push off of studs and bow out in the middle and it's going to be very obvious, it's going to look like some big pregnant belly or something like that. It's going to be very obvious that it didn't stick. Sometimes it just disbonds at the edge. It's very common to see moisture and frost on the side of a 2x6 or a 2x4 stud. The installer didn't pick it up and the foam uh, disbonds from the side of the stud, curls off to the edge and you can see a gap along the edges of the studs. If that's the case, it needs to be removed, it needs to be cut back, it needs to be dried out, it needs to be resprayed. Uh, the foam itself, especially in two pound foam, should be hard to remove. Even, even half pound foam requires some effort to dig it out when it's properly adhered. You're not supposed to just grab onto a piece of it and be able to pull a huge section of it off with little to no effort. So it should require some tools, it should require some beating on it and uh, hammering and using a crowbar or pry bar uh, to get the foam to disbond. If the substrate is clean and dry, then adhesion is not going to be an issue. The third area is lack of consistency. If the depth is erratic on the product, if it's varying in the closed cell world, let's say it's varying from one inch all the way up to five inches thick, and you're supposed to be getting a two inch or a three inch application, but it's varying from one to five, well, that, that's a problem. You need to look and see if it's thin on the edges. Did they detail and picture frame out the edges? Nobody's paying you to do the middle, the easy part. They're paying you to do the corners and the most difficult areas. So you need to start in those areas first 
and you need to work your way to the open areas. So check and ensure that there's foam into the corners uh, where you've got cross blocking in a wall or in a ceiling. Make sure that the foam is all the way behind, that it's gone all the way into the, the tightest spots. You know, shine a flashlight into there, look, use your camera on your phone to take a picture and see if the foam is all the way in there where you can see it. And make sure that they have not oversprayed important items while they're trying to do this. Like they've put foam all over the studs, all over important brackets that are going to need to be cleaned off, like a bracket for a range hood or a speaker or something like that. And that you have any of the excess foam shaved off so that you can see how the consistency is. With half pound foam, the stud cavities are going to be just barely filled or slightly overfilled. Then the foam is going to be shaved down. Uh, so that you've got a consistent amount inside the stud cavities. It can be a little more difficult with half pound foam to judge um, the foam because you're trying not to waste so much of it and have so much of it on the floor. You're not paying for what's going on the floor, you're paying for what's going in the wall. In the old days they used to totally overfill those cavities and shave off two, three inches of the material. Now they're trying to do a just filled cavity so it's not uncommon for the foam to be uh, a half an inch off of uh, the depth of there. If you find areas that are not up to speed and spec, then I suggest that you mark them out with a spray paint, like a spray can, or a great big huge marker, and then you can get a depth probe. Don't go on judging foam by sight. Uh, that is a very difficult thing. The, the inconsistency of the material will sometimes play havoc with your eyes, and you'll think everything is high or everything is low. Get yourself a, a nail or a, a shank of some sort, sharpen it up, measure out one inch, two, three, or four, whatever you're going for, probe it into the foam, and start to take some readings uh, in a square foot, a couple square feet around an area, and get an average. It is not uncommon when you are going for a nominal thickness to be anywhere from a quarter of an inch low to a quarter of an inch high. The fourth and final area is lack of prep and lack of cleanup. Foam is being sprayed. It is not a rigid product that you're installing and cutting to fit. It's going on as a liquid. So that means that the people are going to have to mask windows, doors, and floors. Be careful that tubs and showers, pot lights, brackets, fireplaces, they're all protected ahead of time. Sometimes these things should not even be installed in ahead of time. Um, timing and coordination with other trades is critical. Uh, too early can be a real problem because you go in and spray the foam into a structure and then the electrician comes in or the plumber comes in and they have to hack at the foam and cut the foam out. That's no good. You just paid for it. Now they're hacking it all out to install what they need to do. Likewise, you don't want to come in too late. I've seen guys come in late. They put a whole bunch of things in the way and it's just going to be next to impossible for the spray guy to get their uh, foam in behind HRVs and furnaces and ductwork and water heaters and pot lights are in the way and fireplaces are in the way and it can absolutely be impossible sometimes to get foam all the way into the back. So there is a balance between too early and too late. Remember foam is a system, right? It's not a standalone product on its own. You don't just spray and walk away. You're going to need canned foam to get into small areas where the spray gun can't get into. You're going to need to caulk seams and joints to keep air from moving in and out of the building. So once the foam is done, it should be shaved, it should be trimmed. These people should be carrying their mess away. They should be sweeping and cleaning up. And then you should be getting a complete air seal package done by the installer so that, so that you know that it's a complete system when you're done and you're ready to go to drywall. And the final thing with all of this is that they should be checking the job over with you, the homeowner, and making sure that everything is addressed properly and your questions are answered and the foam is up to spec. So if you follow all of these four steps, you're going to avoid the major pitfalls. Thank you for viewing the video. Share, like, and subscribe. Hit the like button and we'll see you on the next one.